such a tremendous looking trophy. Welcome to the number one PlayStation podcast in the Oceanias. My name's Dylan White. Joining me, Ashley Hopley. Hey Dylan, excited to be here to talk about something that has divided the community. Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> it is funny how, like, in the same week, kind of, yep. to... I mean, it's a game and a TV show, but whatever. Everyone was all cheering about Endgame, I suppose. But, uh, we're, of course, we're teasing about a certain little game. Uh, Thanks, God. We'll get to that in a minute. This week on the show, though, got a bronze trophy. Brie Larson playing Beat Saber, even if it isn't PSVR, but it's still VR. And VR's cool, so we support it nonetheless. Brie Larson's also cool, so we support her nonetheless. We've got a silver trophy for Persona 5 The Royale, being royal. A gold trophy going to Hideo teasing more for Death Stranding and a big old platinum being awarded to Sony releasing its first big first party release of the year, even though it's got mixed reactions. So Days Gone. Mm. So let's jump into it straight away. I have been playing Days Gone. <gasps> uh, we pushed this episode because I wanted to put uh, some more hours into it because it released late last week. I Friday. Even. I was... Friday, yeah, and I was working Friday, I was working Saturday, I was working Sunday, you know, I had to watch fucking Game of Thrones and set up these other shows and whatever else, and I I just hadn't had as much, I I put a few hours into it, but not enough that I felt comfortable, I mean, I could have come on here and half hearts, but I'm like, if I'm going to talk about it, I just, I want to make sure I had a a proper impression. Some proper impressions, you know, not just like, oh, I've only played it for a couple hours. I want to, I reckon by now I've put I would have put close to 10 by now, I think. Like, if not 10. So, I feel, I feel yeah. okay about it. I feel like I'm, I'm a decent... Still not a lot, but... Not a lot for the game it is, but I feel like it's enough that I can have first impressions because it's 10 hours is not much for how long the game's probably going to be, but it's, that's why I needed 10 hours to be able to have my <laughs> first yeah. impressions, I guess. I guess what type of game it is. Uh, so, Days Gone, for those that don't know, is an open world, uh, apocalyptic zombie-ish they're not really zombies they're, they're called freakers though uh zombie survival action. slash action adventure uh, i don't really know it's a it's a mix mash of a lot of genres to be honest it's like it sound genres. from what i've heard it described as it's far cry in a zombie apocalypse without actual zombies i'll say i say no because the world so far doesn't feel anything like a Ubisoft open world. And if you know okay. what a Ubisoft open world feels like, it's very much like Checkpoint, go here, open towers. up map, more, tower this, blah, 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 blah. Um, for my roughly 10 hours so far, I'd actually say the the world so far feels rather realistic for what it is, but still having those obviously gamey type things that make it a, a video game in it. But like um there's no the, the outposts that i've gone through right so there's random places where there's these uh marauders for instance uh they're like big usual thing they're bigger and they're not just like kind of in far cry where there's a heap of them obviously you know like in far cry games there's usually like 20 30 of these fucking things to take down blah blah blah, blah. they they seem a lot more spread out and less common in this like there's not too many humans just floating around a place it's mostly just the freakers uh yeah, but so the game starts, I suppose just to rewind a bit, the game starts uh, with this video clip that just kind of throws you somewhat into the action of you and your uh, wife, who you've seen in the trailer and stuff, Sarah, and then um, Boozer, who's your, your your best buddy, biker gang buddy or whatever. Uh, and Sarah's been like injured and you chuck her on this helicopter uh, to be, get taken away somewhere to hopefully get help. And then you uh, you and Boozer are left there on top of this rooftop. And it's like in a city somewhere and like everything's on fire. And it seems like it's just kind of when shit's ki- hitting the fan, I guess. Uh, you can tell they make Deacon look a Deacon St. John, uh, the main character played by Sam Whitworth. They make him look a lot younger in this time period to make sure you know it's definitely before the, the period in which you're playing. Because then the game cuts forward... Uh, a couple of years and you know it's a couple of years because in the pause menu it tells you how many days have gone presumably since sarah uh was last seen or died or whatever i mean here's the thing and i don't know if there's a spoiler to say this but I don't believe the fucking game for one in for one second <laughs> for one second like <laughs> they say she's died but i'm not buying it do i have any any evidence to back up my theory of not buying it yes it's a video game that's all I've got for you. 
but I think I rest my case at it, at it being a video <laughs> game. I don't know. I, I just straight away, I just feel like there's going to be some twisty type thing with here with her because I, it's that whole rule of, I never saw her body, you know? So I, yeah. I don't care if you sit, whatever. But so he pause menu says like 730 something days gone since whatever. Uh, so it's a couple of years since that incident. And now the world's really at its shit. Uh, there's a couple different ca- uh, s- complexes, I don't know, like encampments, I guess is what you'd call them, uh, set out around the place. Uh, Deacon and his buddy Boozer kind of just kept to themselves. They actually are set up in this tower that pretty much, which is why I laughed so much when I saw uh, Buddy Buddy Watson from Dash Culture put out this, uh, he photoshopped this tweet of like the Firewatch thing. Uh, front cover of the yep. Firewatch game, but changed it to say Days Gone. And I was laughing so much because I literally had the exact same thoughts the first time I went to uh, Boozer Boozer and Deacon's place. I'm like, it's a fucking tower from Firewatch. Like <laughs> The game's like, go over here, it's in Firewatch and stuff. But anyway, that's where they hang out. And it seems they mostly just kind of keep to themselves. They they kill any um, marauders that kind of come into their territory trying to take over type thing. But mostly seems like they keeping to themselves someone doing jobs for some of the local uh leaders of different camps like taking out the 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 marauders and stuff that come into the territory because there are still types of of course like most post post-apocalyptic dip type stuff uh there are like groups of people who are going around just looting killing and whatever and then there's like people who are setting up and trying to run some sort of uh society and deacon and boozer seem to do jobs for them to kill off and keep out the people who are doing the just running around like it's mad max out there uh you get around on the motorbike uh your motorbike gets fucked uh well i don't spoiler for the first half hour your motorbike gets like stolen and torn apart for parts at the start of the game and they quickly introduce to you to a more souped up bike they're like hey here's what your bike could be like it's got nitrous and all these sorts of things and it gets taken away from you and you get a bare bones bike and it's then you're going to spend the rest of the game building up and upgrading the parts and you can add different decals uh change the color of parts you know like there's decent system to it and they really want you to feel like the bike is uh like a companion and part of the game because the the main menu where you click new game load game continue of course it has a picture of your bike there and as you change it throughout the the game every time you go to log in the the bike is updated on that main screen to whatever you've changed it as in the game so you're going to progressively see your bike uh become cooler looking as you progress through the game and stuff um the survival like there's lots of survival elements in this to the point that like uh you have to build or create however you, i don't know however you want to build it mix parts do whatever you need to do between scraps and bottles and syringes health packs all these sorts of things to make your uh items so you need to make health packs you need to make syringes you need to make Molotov cocktails you need scrap to repair your bike you need to fucking find gas for your bike i suppose it's like the more survival-y aspects of it a lot of creating items and looking after your bike and all this sort of stuff which sounds a lot more annoying than i th- i've found it to be so far like i've never once run out of fuel because every time i ride to a main uh place or i stop in a city to kind of like do a mission there, like an abandoned city or something like an abandoned town to do a mission there or something there's always fuel close by that's it's always kind of sitting out in the open and as long as you don't forget that, hey, I should go grab that and walk it over to my, my bike. And even if your bike's at 80% fuel, you might as well top it up. Like, it's not really been a an issue. But I kind of like that it adds a, a feel of constant, like, because you'll, you'll, you'll look on the map and it'll be like, that's 1.2 kilometers away. And you're like, mm, yeah, that's, I'm at like 60% fuel. Like, I should be good. Like, it adds a little bit of that. Like, you're actually like planning out your your trips on your bike, I guess. And I haven't fast traveled yet, but when you do look at locations to fast travel, it'll tell you below it. It's going to take this amount of time, which means it could move it from daytime to nighttime by the time you arrive at that location. And it'll also tell you it's going to take this much fuel from you. So even fast traveling takes uh, fuel. For the most part, you are interacting and fighting zombies or freakers as they call them in the game. I haven't come across your freaker bears or anything crazy like that yet. I'm I've been dealing with primarily your normal old straggler freakers and some of the wolf but both both normal wolves and also freaker wolves. And both of them fucking suck. And 
two times they've both gave me a heart attack and jump scare because I'll be riding along in the middle of the night on my bike and then out of fucking nowhere, I just get tackled off it by a wild fucking wolf out of nowhere. So uh, that's your your scares for the day. Uh, the combat is... I don't know, you could probably play it how you want to and you kind of get this this choice a little bit because there is a skill... It's not a skill tree. It's more of a, like... I think by the end of the game, you could potentially have everything unlocked. I'm not really sure, but it's like there's three columns and for three different things. So like survival, endurance, and uh, the last one's like combat or whatever. I don't remember. But it's like three different categories. And then in those, there's three different rows. And once you buy two skills out of the three, then it'll unlock the second row stuff and so on and so forth. So it's not really a skill tree so it's per se, but uh, you can like unlock uh, focus for your gun so you can slow down time to get more headshots precisely and stuff. And you can upgrade it so that lasts longer and stuff if that's how you want to play the game. But then there's other skills for like melee combat that makes it melee combat a lot easier. So I think it really comes down to how you personally want to play the game. 90% of the time I've been doing melee combat because ammo is a resource, I guess. Like you have two guns. I haven't like run out of ammo ever so far, but I've got, close to the point where I'm, I'm more happy to go in for melee stuff if possible because uh, you can like if you get a bat and you can build the bat into a uh, like walking dead negan style fucking wire wrapped bat and that takes out enemies quite nicely and the melee combat isn't too hard to really understand most of the time if a zombie is about to i keep saying zombie i'm sure fucking bend would hate me but uh most of the time if they're going to dive at you you can press r1 and you can roll out of the way and you can just switch between targets and at most i think like three maybe pushing it four freakers at at the most i can kind of handle uh a few more than that it becomes you die even then like three you have to be somewhat concentrating and i suppose that's the other thing like you will die pretty fucking fast in this game i've come across a horde once and i didn't realize they were there and i made some noise and next second, oh my God, <laughs> I was <laughs> fucking surrounded. And yeah, I mean, if you've seen gameplay or trailers and stuff like that, I, I, I definitely feel like the amount of them and how they move and, you know, just like, it's it's cool, I suppose. You know, it, I, know I know it's that World War Z effect. You know, there is a lot of them. They come, they surround you, they fucking... I, I, at this stage in the game, I'm honestly like, I have no idea how I'm supposed to kill that many of them, even though that's part of like the, to 100% the game yeah. and some side mission stuff is to take them out. And I know you've got to use a combination of like uh, traps and whatever else and running away and kind of like luring them through uh, explosives and yep. all these sorts of things. And it's not just stand there and shoot them all. But at this stage, I'm like, I don't have access to that many... Things. like the resources needed to build that stuff or even the ability to build these sorts of traps and stuff. So I don't think I can even do it at this stage. So it's like seeing a horde is, oh my God, run. <laughs> and they are very quite, they are quite threatening. Um, which is why whenever I get to these like outposty type things, which are side missiony type stuff, you find these, um, I can't remember the name of it exactly. It's like the the name of like the government company or whatever that was set up around the world at one place, it seems. But they've now abandoned all these places it's like EUA or UIA or something like that, for, for instance. Uh, they've got these little checkpoints around the place. And if you can set up and get inside them, you get an upgrade, which you can then choose to use on either your stamina, your focus bar or your health. I Every time I have found one, put it straight into my stamina because being able to run more uh, has proven to be quite relevant to a game where all of a sudden you can just be surrounded by a heap of freakers and you're like, oh, fuck, get me the fuck out of here. Uh, it does some... Um, I'll say there's a few of the mechanics and interesting things that I quite like. Like it's it's safe system, for instance. You don't have to go back to a home base to be able to save. And you also can't just save out in the middle of the open, which is kind of nice because it means you can't like save... And like choose your way through harder parts, like just being able to save constantly. Where you can save is either next to a bed, which you'll find in bunkers or like towns and stuff like that, or next to your bike. So as long as you're next to your bike and not in combat, you can do, you can click pause and then click save game, 
or you can hold down triangle and do a quick save. And the quick save feature is quite nice because it means that if you're like, I think I'm about to dive here, but let's see what happens. You can park your bike, hold down triangle, quick save, run along. Oh shit, there's a horde, die. And then like load you back. But you don't have to take time to like pause, save, click on save file. Yes, I'd like to overwrite that save. Blah, 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 blah. blah. So that's quite nice. Hmm. Um, I think the biggest problem, and because obviously if one again, it's like the negative... <coughs> Reception. The game has had a. I it's don't been know critically looks. panned, pretty much. What, what do you know? What the uh, cr- cr- Metacritic is at, at the moment? If you want to look it up at the moment, because like I, I saw the game getting everywhere between you know fives to sixes to sevens. I saw a couple places giving it eights. I think though, I've but, seen some places give it ten. So really, yeah. So well, I'd say well, it's yeah. it's a bit not all like over the place. Big outlets, huge, not big outlets, or like gaming outlets. Yeah, it seems the reception's been primarily negative, but I'd still say it's uh, all over the place a bit. It's currently at a 72, which, you know, that's solid. Yeah, exactly. That's, fuck, I thought it would be lower, to be honest. So 72 is actually a lot higher. That That's a that's like a, you know, 7 out of 10. That's a, it's okay. It's got problems. Um, I honestly think that the biggest problem for this game when people were reviewing it would have been a couple things. The first few hours are a slog. They're really slow-ish, I guess. But it's, it's like you're doing stuff, but there's there's no hook. And it's really weird because like the, the first night I sat down to play it, right? Friday night, the game comes out. I go to work. I come home. I'm like, I'll put a couple hours in uh, or, or an hour in, right? Before bed type thing. And I sit down and I do that thing. And you know, when you're playing game, you're like, when I get to this point, I'll get off. I'll save and get off. When I get to this point, when I finish this level type thing. In my mind, I said... I will get off the game when it inevitably reaches the point at the start of game where some big thing happens and like kind of sets up what the story for the rest of the game is going to be. You know what I mean? Like, here's the big hook. Here's what the reason you're going to be doing stuff. Well, here's what it is. And it never came. Like, or the reason that I'm doing stuff happened and I didn't realize it was so small and a non-event, you know? That it, it, I was eventually just like, okay, I guess I'm just kind of going around doing stuff at the moment. I don't really know what's happening. Um, as I progressed more into the game, what's kind of makes me enjoy playing at this stage is the world's cool. Uh, some of the characters are interesting. Deacon is mildly interesting. I wouldn't say like as a character, he there's it's done that certain like Nathan Drakey type thing with him. I guess is the way to describe it, where like in cutscenes and stuff, he comes across as he has morals and he literally has a moment early in the game where like someone like pulls a gun from behind on him, behind him and he like turns around and he's like, you got no bullets left in that gun, blah, 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 blah. And then he, he's like, you're lucky I don't, shoot, I don't shoot unarmed women or children and tells her to, to run away. It's like that sets up his whole, uh, I've got morals. Uh, but then of course, once that's over, as the player... You just go around fucking sneaking around, st- stabbing all these people in the, the yeah. backs and whatever else. It's like that kind of the kind of weigh each other a little bit. It's a bit weird, but that's a video game problem. I feel for a lot of games in general. Um, but yeah, so far, he's an okay character. There's this intrigue, of course, because you're introduced to the the, the army group or whatever the hell they are, and there's several missions early where you can see they're they're um, they're doing something. And I still don't know, but they're coming in and they're researching the freakers. And of course there's that hook with a lot of zombie stuff or like end of world type stuff of like, what caused this? Are they researching for a cure? Like, where are they coming from? Because the first time you see one of the hel- helicopters fly over early in the game, Deacon's like, holy shit, a chopper. And he calls up um, uh, his friend is like, uh, there's a chopper here. No way there's a chopper here. Like the, the idea of them seeing a chopper seems after so many years weird. I think they think that the army was completely wiped out. So now it's like, well, where are they coming from? Where's their base? You know, like so there's a lot of questions to what all this means. And that, and that's interesting. I also find the combat fun. I mostly play it as a stealth game. If I can, if possible, I'm not like running into these uh, camps, uh, guns blazing. I'm enjoying going up on top of like the last encampment I took out. I parked my bike a little bit far away, saved my game. Wandered up to the top of a cliff, got out the binoculars because you can mark enemies, marked all of the enemies that I could see, uh, 
So then you can track them, of course. Went down to my bike, saved it again. I'm like, cool, I've done that. I'm good to go. And then I snuck in the back way and then I slowly made my way around the encampment stealthily um, because you can click triangle behind enemies and he'll take them out stealthy, like stab them in the spines and take them out. So that's how I'm playing the game. And maybe I'm enjoying it more that way because I wouldn't say it's like great as a stealth game, but you do have a an array of options. Like you can throw rocks to attract enemies and you can um, create little uh, machines that'll attract the people and stuff. And then there's like a a mix of the unknown sometimes like you could be fighting human enemies and then all of a sudden the fucking horde of uh freakers comes through and it's just like well there's my whole plan to shit and like, <laughs> like what is a uh, what's gonna happen now but uh yeah i i would say reading the critical reception it was interesting going in because i was expecting it to be a hot mess um and i think this is also a rare case where the version of the game that people were playing for review it was 10 times worse than the version i'm playing now because the version of the game I was playing today as of recording on uh, Tuesday, the uh, 30th of uh, April, right? Yep. The version I was playing today, which is version 1.05 or something like that. I've had two updates since Friday. Two updates. that may, And that they were, uh, most people playing it for reviews were playing on like version one or 1.0, yeah. right? So I've had like four fucking updates come out since I even played the game. Uh, I had none of the issues that I was having graphically, frame rate wise or audio after today's patch 1.05. So for me, most of the issues I was going to complain about are currently gone. So I find it like no reason to really complain about them. But to quickly go over them, what was happening was... Uh, frame rate drops were quite heavy at times when I was going around on my bike. Uh, several times the audio completely cut out on me and would disappear for like a minute and then come back. And that was really fucking weird and obviously quite annoying. Um, graphical pop-in was, is usually a thing in open world games and you get it in most games, but it was at that level where it was so obvious and so annoying. It, it wasn't like off in the distance a little bit. It was like, it was riding into nothingness at certain points. Um, and it's, just random shit like that. But I played it for my longest period today after the most recent patch went up and none of those issues happened for me. So if anything, it says, hey, this game really wasn't ready to be released. And they're rushing out patches trying to fix these issues yeah. post-release, post-reviews, rushing, 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 rushing. And there's still probably little tiny bugs that need fixing in here and all these sorts of things. So to me, it just screams, this game really needed another month, two months three months and uh they ran out of time which yeah is which is a shame. i guess but yeah yeah it's like because it definitely seems like the reviews after launch have been better than the reviews at launch so that just tells yes. you that a lot of issues have been patched out you'd think yes well yeah most none of the issues i was having were and even some of the ones i read people complaining about went there when i was playing on day one but that was the version i played on day one was patch version uh, 103 that was my day one yeah. patch so there was two patches during the uh before, before the game ever released during the the review period for the game so it's like holy shit what is even going on here yeah. but yeah look i am um, i'm enjoying the game i'm looking forward to playing more of it the story so far is meh like there's, there's not really so much happening with deacon as a character in the current day the flashbacky stuff i'm getting which uh, I don't think that's a spoiler to say because obviously you've watched the trailers and whatever else. But like at periods, there's flashback his stuff and you're, you're getting to learn about the relationship between him and Sarah. I'm intrigued in that. That seems like it could be a fun uh, romance to see uh, how that all played out and went and these sorts of things. Because she's a, um, well, I don't want to say that might be a spoiler, but she's she's not like from the same crowd, I guess, as, as him. Like she, yeah, when she comes in. So, that, well, that's kind I don't of a think fun it's, thing. She's like a botanist or a scientist thing. So okay, did they say that in a trailer yeah. already? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a trailer thing, or at least something that was okay. information well, yeah, they released a, before. Okay, yeah. Well, she's a botanist, so and he's obviously part of this biker gang, and it's like yeah, I'm intrigued to see that romance, uh, how that okay. grows and gets. To the I don't point know. It seems are. very cliche. Botanists, <laughs> biker men getting together. Oh, another it's one very, of those. It's been, it's been done 10 million times before. Been done to death. Um, and then the, the stuff with the world I'm intri intrigued in. Like, 
I don't. I, I like these types of movies. I guess you know it's like oh, there's a virus that caused all the freakers and blah blah blah. blah. I'm yeah. like okay, like are they are, are they actually going to be? Are they going to leave it open in case they thought that was going to get a sequel, or are they actually going to kind of close it off and be like, who knows how it happened, but this is the world we live in now, or are they going to do something that most people don't do these days, which is hey, someone actually managed to find a fucking cure, and uh, we can actually start rebuilding proper civilization now I, I don't know it could go either mm. way at the moment i feel like they're teasing a lot of uh teasing a lot of things with the government and these sorts of things like uh, is happening um yeah day day is gone you got any questions yeah no yeah it sounds good sounds interesting still not gonna play it probably <laughs> what's the re- main reason you don't I just play it? yeah i just not for me it just yeah it doesn't grab my attention really which aspect though I know because it's not zomb- the open obviously world the, thing. the zombie scary thing is like yeah, and then, yeah. I don't know. It just maybe when it's on sale at some point, I'll go back. Like everybody's saying, it's great now that all it's been patched <laughs> to death or patched to per- patched yeah. perfection. But yeah, yeah. I, the thing well, that would draw me in is an amazing story, and it doesn't sound like it's an amazing story. Yeah, I de- I definitely wouldn't say there's any amazing story so far, but you know. Very Things long game, apparently. You're, yeah, if I, I could yeah, get to I'm the end of the game. Sixty hours, so that's <laughs> yeah. But I don't think how that's mu- a how much point. of that if is like, true. But that's like Final Fantasy stuff. Oh, if you play it for like thirty hours, you get to the good story. It's like yeah, that's not really a selling point. It's like if it's it's if no. it's a strike, if you got to play it for that long to get to interesting point. But I think like I hate doing the whole if I'd score it now because it could change by the time I finish it. It could even go up or down, obviously. But that whole like Metacritic thing, it's like seven out of ten. Yeah, I'd probably set it like a 7 out of 10 yeah. currently. It's a perfectly okay game, open world. It's a perfectly serviceable open world game if you'd like an open world uh, zombie game. Yeah. It does some interesting things. It does some not so interesting things. Mix it all together and you've got an okay game. And I think that's kind of good because honestly, you, you can't have every Sony first party uh, exclusive be fucking tens out of tens out of tens out of tens nines out of tens these sorts of things i think it's good to have a a bit of a mixed bag you know and a seven out of ten if that's what the majority is it's like well it's not bad it's yeah. fucking seven out of ten it's it's fine it's perfectly okay and a lot a lot of people will enjoy it a lot more and a lot of people won't enjoy it so whatever put in perspective 53 positive 34 negative no 34 mixed and two negative so it's in that middle to upper range. Yeah. And fair enough. And I feel like a lot of those with the, if most of the, the negative stuff was uh, graphic performance issues and those sorts of things, then a lot of store scores, it seems, would actually go up if they were revealing it now because, as, as I'm mm-hmm. saying, those issues are non-existent. I'll me, read you the yeah. two lowest ones. There is yeah. no dying. The Days Gone is visually impressive, heightened by expressive motion capture and a lifelike wilderness. The signs of life that should make for a great experience are all there, but in every shining sunset, detailed human face, and open clearing, I couldn't find an, any shred of soul. And the other ones, the game meet the be- met, meets the baseline level of quality we might expect from a big bug jitter joint, yet it remains a tiresome, empty experience. So, not yeah. so much the I actual graphics. I can't, uh, I, graphic I can't stuff, argue so. with either of those so far, is the thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they, they're just, like, I don't disagree, but at the yeah. same time, I'm obviously just getting enjoyment out of it, even though I kind of agree with what they're saying. And they obviously weren't getting um, enjoyment out of it. I've seen a lot of people comparing it to Mad Max, which I kind of feel. I get what they're trying to say. You know, because Mad Max yeah, was a well, game that came out yeah. and kind of got crappy reviews. Well, yeah, when you I said the bike the, thing, I'm like, oh, that sounds like Mad Max with the car. The, the car game. thing, yeah, yeah. Well, it was like Mad Max was a perfectly serviceable open world game that kind of got shitty reviews. But then a lot of people, myself included... I really, Great really game. enjoyed that game and yeah. I platinumed it and it was like, and it's seven out of 10 or whatever for yeah. sure. It had, but that, was it just a hook? Hook. That got you in, or, yeah. yeah, it had a hook. I'm like, I cannot tell you the story of that game. I cannot tell you any of the villains. Ma- Max himself, Rocket Sanksy, went through fucking nothing in that game, but I enjoyed the gameplay. I enjoyed upgrading my car. Like the world was interesting. So yeah, I, Days Gone kind of falls into that category at the moment for me because the story hasn't hooked me. If the story could hook me by the end, but I, I definitely feel like if it takes 30 hours for the story to get interesting, then I wouldn't be telling someone to play it for the story, you know, because that's way too long for the story get in, to get interesting if you're not interested in it from a uh, gameplay level from the outside. But luckily, I'm enjoying it from a 
gameplay level. So, yeah. cool. In the news, Days Gone is getting a free update in June. So, kick it off, continue the Days Gone thing. But this it's already getting the- a bunch of updates constantly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's hot heaps up. So this comes from a uh, PlayStation blog. Uh, Jeff Ross, game director at Ben Studio, uh, says, <clears throat> uh, whether playing normal... Well, pitches the game a little bit here first, but it's important for the rest, I think. Whether playing no, no, easy, normal, or hard mode, you can expect a game that challenges your survival skills across a 30-plus hour golden path. So there's what was kind of just talking about. It's 30 hours, apparently, for the main story. You're a third but of the way so, yeah, but there's a lot of side story stuff I'm probably doing without even knowing it. Uh, many more hours of open world hordes, ambush camps, infection zones, and mysterious Nero. That's what they're called, Nero. Checkpoints, a dynamic <laughs> event in post-apoplic- post-apocalyptic Oregon setting. Not only does this world come for you, but starting in June, a whole new difficulty mode and new challenges each week are all coming for Days Gone owners with an active internet connection <laughs> for free. Uh, survival difficulty mode test players by daring them to beat the story with increased difficulty settings, no fast travel, or survival vision, which is survival vision's your typical Witcher, Batman, whatever. It doesn't yep. show you enemies. It shows you... We can upgrade Tracks it and show stuff, you yeah. enemies, but it shows you like... Yeah, stuff and like items you can pick up and whatever else to help out. Yeah. Uh, and an immersive HUD that removes maps and indicators from the gameplay screen. Yeah, so fuck that mode. Uh, every <laughs> tweak and change made is designed to further immerse players and ratchet up the tension to make the definitive survival experience. Uh, I'm sure people, some people like that, but yeah, personally not for me. Uh, each week beginning in June, a new bike, horde, or combat challenge will be deployed to test players even further. These challenges take key gameplay features of Days Gone and twist them in a unique way to earn additional items or rewards. We'll give you more information on the specific challenges down the road. Beating the survival difficulty and challenges won't be in vain. Players can earn new trophies and unique bike skins to show off in photo mode to prove the bona fide Days Gone survivors. Are you... Uh, I certainly won't be. I'll be finishing it on normal. Uh, if I hit a point in the game where it becomes too hard <laughs> and I just want to finish it, I would uh, even chuck it down to easy because if you're telling me it's going to take me fucking 80 hours to platinum this thing, I'll chuck it down to easy once I beat the, the ca- campaign get it out of my face. Um, yeah, survival modes are cool for these types of games because I know some players actually really enjoy that like feeling of the hard removed and the indicators and all that sort of yeah. stuff. So that's cool for people who actually care about it. None of the content I'm like, what's this mean? New bike? <laughs> New horde? Like, as I was just saying, I can barely consider the, the idea of taking down a single horde as is sounds impossible. So <laughs> it's hard to get excited about that. Uh, combat challenge? I don't know what the hell that means, but nonetheless, three content for a game to keep people playing it is uh, not a bad thing. I mean, so. it's smart. David Jaffe is working on a new single player horror game, apparently. So, David Jaffe. In case you don't know, for some reason, of course, created God of War. Uh, his most recent project was uh, Drawn to Death, which we talked about a couple of weeks ago. Rip. Servers were closed down, so RIP. Uh, he took to Twitter and said over three tweets the following. I'm designing slash writing something new these days. It's a single player horror game that is attempting something new within game storytelling. And I am in love with it. I have shown no one what I'm working on and thus... I have no funding and no interest in this project. I think he means no, like outside he interest. has interest, but he has the outside. <laughs> when I do show the world, it may be that everyone hates it and no one wants to make it, or it may become the next big thing. At this stage, I don't get to know. There are days, this lack of knowing is incredibly stressful and scary. I consider myself a pro and thus I'll push through fear and keep going. But I wanted to share no matter your level of experience, there will be times this stage is terrifying, but it's also a lot of fun. Smiley face. Uh, so yeah, what, what do you reckon? David Jaffe back at it. If he's saying that he's got no interest, hasn't showed anyone, like what, what's he really doing? Do you reckon he's just like storyboarding? <laughs> like what? Well, I yeah, don't, I don't know. Sort of like, working of- out whatever he wants to do, I guess. There's not much. Yeah. I guess just getting a pitch together, I guess, to get other people on board. So Yeah. I there I suppose there was like a a level of intrigue after the whole drawn to death thing of like is this the game because of how it failed and stuff that could send Jaffe into like you know I'm done I can't be bothered like 
you know, because that was drawn to death was a pretty big, I'd say, failure. I don't, I don't feel like that's arguable, really. Uh, that the game was pretty much uh, well, it got horrible reviews, and I don't know anyone that played it. And we obviously played it and didn't run very well, and all sorts of things. Cool idea did yeah. come together as well. As well, and it's also interesting to see that Jaffe could go from being interested in this multiplayer stuff, following all the God of War stuff. And now he's like, I want to go back to single player. A, a story. Yeah. A story. It makes me wonder if he's been more inspired by even his own franchise, kind of like uh, got the most recent God of War thing, like seeing all these single player games, even like Last of Us and, you know, whatever else that's come out over the last five plus years, uh, doing single player stories so well that he's kind of like, yeah, I want back in. Mm, you know? I've. Maybe it's just the idea. It, it'll be interesting to see what it is, but I mean, if you get the idea, then everything else works backwards from that. And I guess, yeah. David Jaffe horror game sounds like you're out. Probably, unless <laughs> unless this storytelling is that it's not horrific at all. That's that's mm. the new horror in. It's not scary. <laughs> that's his big twist on the horror genre. He's like, it's a horror game, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> press square triangle square x to have sex with the lady or don't that's my twist you can have a choice now <laughs> <laughs> uh the, in the they, in the i saw an article uh that led me to those tweets i can't remember who sorry but they like pointed out that that's like jaffe did win a bafta for uh god of war 2 like for writing yeah. and stuff so it's it's interesting he's been gone from the uh that seat, I guess, for so long as he was over there doing mm. Drawn to Death for X amount of years and whatever else. So I'm keen. Obviously, this is years and years away for whatever it is, presumably. Uh, but at least we know that Jaffe is actually working on something if you're worried what he'll yep. be up to. I'm sure PlayStation um, will be interested with their long, really, well, long history. Maybe, yeah. maybe after Drawn to Death, maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, that's we'll, true. We'll, we'll see. But maybe because it's a single player thing, they'll have more faith. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, so... Hideo Kojima has been talking Death Stranding while he's been at the Tribeca Film Festival. If you don't follow him on Twitter or you don't follow Jeff Keighley, then you wouldn't have seen a lot. But Jeff Keighley was doing his whole uh, fanboy thing again on his Instagram and Twitter where he'll just be taking, like, there was one video where he's, like, walking down the street with Hideo and he's just, like, walking down the street and the, the video starts, he's just, like, Hideo's back. He's like, hey, Hideo, Hideo. And then Hideo turns around he's like, you join the city. Also, you know, something just like, it's like, oh, Jeff, you're such a fanboy. <laughs> Jeez. But yeah, uh, Hideo has been at the Tribeca Film Festival. There's been photos of him with uh, Gomero and a bunch of other people, of course, as well, actors and stuff like that. If you follow Hideo on Twitter, you know he's a big fa film fan. So he was just there as a uh, puncher, fan. I believe. Yeah, primarily. Yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, he did do interviews and talk about stuff. Which, of course, everyone's asking about PS, PS5, Death Stranding, you know, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah. Uh, so this story comes from Push Square. It says, unfortunately, we didn't get a huge amount of new information from the pair, but there are some interesting tidbits to glean from the talk that uh, Norman Reedus and Hideo had about Death Stranding together while they were at the Tribeca Film Festival. Uh, could, could Jim explain that the connection will be that's interesting. Can you, can you explain that connection will be an important theme in the game? Quote, there are so many things happening in the real world, in America, in Europe. Everything is basically connected by the internet, but in a way that we're not connected in the real world these days. I'm putting that as a metaphor in the game. The player will have to reconnect the world in the game. You're very alone. There's solitude, but you're trying to connect. The story and the gameplay the key word is connection. There are so many things in between, of course, but the key is connection. Uh, the article then says he continued to say, I also threw in a really new idea. You're connecting the game and everyone is playing it together and you'll be connected. Everyone will be connected together as well. I can't say anything because Sony will be very unhappy. <laughs> I don't want to be disconnected from Sony. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I thought that was quite a funny thing. Uh, it says, Kojima also said, the article continues to say that, Kojima also said that we'll be getting a lot of his trademark cutscenes to watch, uh, saying, quote, in Death Stranding, I'm going to put every aspect of Norman in there. 
There's lots of cutscenes and there's lots of long cutscenes. You'll see Norman as Sam in the game and see he's acting in the cutscenes and you'll enjoy that. I'm sure I will. I'm sure I will. <laughs> uh, so speaking of Norman, the star of the game also had some cryptic things to say, saying, quote, it's a, ver- it's a different way of thinking. I have a teenage son. I played some of the games where you just kill everybody. It's not like that. There's violent elements to it, but it's just a different thing. Kojima also went on to talk about a hidden area in the game where you take control of a camera. Quote, one more thing. I can't say where, but if you go somewhere in the game, you won't be controlling Norman or Sam. You'll just be controlling a camera. You'll see Sam slash Norman, and you can kind of move the camera to see around. And when you look at him, he might do something like wink at you. So you're actually playing as Norman Reedus as Sam. And then the drama part, Sam will act to hit your emotions. But when you get to this special area, you'll definitely love Norman. You'll be a Norman fan. (laughs) 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 That article rightfully says, sounds like Kojima's take on photo mode. (laughs) I mean, it, it all makes sense now. Does it? No, it Do you doesn't. Want to explain? Do you want to explain? No, it doesn't make sense at all. We're no closer I mean, to knowing what this game is or what it's about. <laughs> I've never seen someone in one, like several sentences, say the word connect or connection or connecting in so many various different ways so many times. He lit that thing. It's like you'll be connected and people are connected, but you're not connected. And I want to be connected. And Norman loves being connected. You love you love being connected. <laughs> oh man! Uh, if I mean, anything, if anything, uh, it's a funny interview. <laughs> it, it is an amusing interview. Um, yeah, this is the, it's on brand for Death Stranding. We just don't know anything. <laughs> nothing makes sense, and it probably won't make sense when it comes out. But we'll love it because <laughs> Kojima told us to. I love it. <laughs> I just love that last part so much as well. And the drama part, Sam will act to hit your emotions, but when you go into this special area, you'll definitely love Norman. You'll be a Norman fan. (laughs) (laughs) What if we already are? What if we're already Norman fans? That's the the true meaning of the game is to appreciate Norman Reedus' acting. Yeah. That is the meaning of the game. Maybe I don't know. I, it could be for the, all we know. The thing, the amount of times he talks about connecting it, it's of course everyone starts to get thinking, rightfully so. It's like, is this like an online type of game? Like, and I don't mean like where you'll bump into other players, but where because there was that thing he toyed with it um, with uh, Phantom Pain, right? Metal Gear Solid Five, yep. where there the, there was like this slight connection thing where it would track. <clears throat> sorry, it would track uh, the amount of people who built nuclear missiles at their home bases and then apparently there was a secret ending or whatever that you could only get if everyone every player in the world destroyed their nuclear missiles and it was like tracking that between a lot of players like the, everyone playing the game so I, I i don't think it's like an mmo or like a like a destiny type multiplayer thing or anything like that when he talks about the connecting stuff between players, I definitely feel like it's going to fall fall more into the line of some like background connecting type thing. Like I don't feel like you're going to run into other players in the game, you know. But it's going to be something a little bit different, nonetheless. <laughs> um, <laughs> what an interview! Uh, Hideo is a he's an he's an interesting guy. <laughs> that that's saying that's that's saying something. Saying something, yeah. Uh, so we got Kingdom Hearts three DLC apparently on the way. Our uh, story comes from IGN. It says shortly after the release of Kingdom Hearts three's first free DLC, word of pale DLC came from a recent Kingdom Hearts concert to- in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, the free DLC, by the way, mo- uh, way was the critical uh, critical mode. Critical or mode. Critical mode, the harder difficulty that everyone likes to play. Not me. Uh, Twitter user Yanling Gaming reportedly attended the concert 
and confirmed that Kingdom Hearts franchise director confirmed a bit of paid and free DLC on the way. The paid DLC is known as Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. That sounds like a real Kingdom Hearts 3 name thing for something, so I say it's legit. According to Yanilin, the paid aspect will include an additional scenario known as Remind, as well as a limit episode plus boss, a new secret episode plus a boss, and an English voiceover option for the Japanese version of the game. Additionally, a new Keyblade and a new form of Sora will be will be made available for free. Uh, not too much additional information available at this time. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, so what do you reckon about this, Ash? Sound legit? Sound like cool things? Sound like things you're interested in? Sure. More Kingdom Hearts. Um, yeah, seems fine. I don't know. I don't know what to expect. It's it Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> what do you it, play it, I more? don't know if we need DLC. I mean, the p- story was pretty wrapped up perfectly. Yeah, but they always do more. That's the thing. They, mm. We always knew there was going to be more because as long Kingdom as it Hearts doesn't do, involve Sora, I'll be fine. Yeah. Well, I will. Prime. They, it will. Yeah. Um. Unless they're adding whole but, new worlds that you have to go to. Well, every other Kingdom Hearts game has always had a, a final mix version. You know, which added new bosses. Sometimes new weapons, uh, secret ending, all this sorts of stuff. So they're just going to add. This as long sort as of- it makes getting that platinum easier, I don't mind. Yeah, that that would be good. Also, well, yep. I don't think any of this does, but anyway. Uh, so additional scenario, I don't really know. It says, it, well, I mean, it's like remind. Is it going to be something to do with the past? I don't really know. Uh, limit episode plus boss. I don't know what the fuck that means. Either way, a new boss means probably trophy. <laughs> if anything <laughs> a new secret episode it's like okay secret episode plus boss so that means you're gonna have to reach certain conditions to even be able to unlock it whatever it is i don't know it's, it sounds like there's potential here for a fair amount of content you know yeah it doesn't it doesn't sound like at first like there might be a much here it just sounds like oh you know extra boss whatever but i'm like a limit episode what does that even mean <laughs> a secret episode what does that even mean but it sounds like the two completely different scenarios and depending on their length they could be quite lengthy and add a bit to the game and then for people who don't want to play you know new keyblade plus a new form for sora which obviously just comes with the new keyblade yeah. uh you got to wonder if it'll be a like just a kingdom hearts on brand keyblade or if it'll be based on uh some disney property that's potentially getting chucked in via one of these things like you know, I, I guess that's the thing. It's like another ge- yeah. another Keyblade begs the question of what is the Keyblade? And if it's based on a new world or something. Or an old world. Or an old world. Yeah, that's the only one that it's could all live sense, action Aladdin. Well, yeah, that would make sense. It's a tie Well, they've got Lion King coming this year too, so. No, that's unrealistic. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, anyway. I'll buy it and play it, sure. Why not? It's Kingdom Hearts. Uh, last news story for the week. Uh, you briefly discussed this in our, uh, last episode of Arcade Couch, but Persona 5 Real was officially announced. I, I just want to chuck it out there. It's so Royal. Royal. No, it's Royal. No, it's, it's Royal. Royal, okay? It's Royal. It's Royal. Ash, let me say this now. What episode is this? Platinum Explosion, episode 108. Yep. Let me put it out there so everyone knows. For 108 episodes, I've said Oceania's. Yep. People say, Dylan, can you not say the word right? I say, no, I am saying it right. I'm saying the word Oceania's correctly because it's the word I'm trying to say. Now, let me lock this in the place for you so you understand on Platinum Explosion, number one PlayStation podcast in Oceania's episode 108, that from now until release and then after, I will refer to Persona 5 Royale as Persona 5 Royale. With cheese. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to have to go along with this, I guess. I don't have much of a choice. Was- <laughs> uh, I just want to let everyone know that uh, at one stage I was like, hey, this year I'll definitely go back and I'll finish Persona 5. That's <laughs> going to be like my gaming goal for the year is to finish Persona 5. Yeah. And then we got all these rumors kicking about, about, you know, D- DLC, something. We, we didn't know what was going to happen. Turns Maybe out it's- a game on another platform. Yeah, that didn't happen. But uh, <laughs> Persona 5 Royale was the thing that was announced. And uh, this means, because it is a brand new game, 
It is not DLC for the new old version. It is not a free Ooh. update. It is a brand new version of the game, much like Persona uh, 4 Golden. It's going to add a new character. It's adding a whole new uh, semester, right? I don't know how it makes sense within the story, considering because, I mean, this isn't a fucking spoiler, is it? Really? It's like, as someone who hasn't even finished the fucking game, pretty sure the main character's in prison. So this is like alternate timeline shit or something now. Anyway. Mm, no. Shouldn't it? Like if it's a, if it's a semester added on, like sh- shouldn't he like isn't the semester taking place while he's in prison? No, he doesn't end up in prison. It's been a while, but I don't think so. Okay, we'll see. Uh, nonetheless, it's adding a whole new semester, so that's a f- fairly lengthy amount of content. I'd say, yeah, potentially uh, another half a game when you consider yeah. that it takes over two semesters. So, yes, so a lot of game, whole new character that could potentially change a lot of the way the game plays out. So, yeah, I'm waiting for this because it's yeah. like if I'm if, if I'm going to invest the time because I'm not going to play it twice. I, mean, I can if, tell you that fucking. I hell. mean, <laughs> if you're going to play for 300 hours, you might as well just wait for that one instead of playing 200 hours of this and 300 300 hours of that. Yes, 100. percent So I will yeah. just be waiting for this one. Uh, now I I've got fuck all to say about the one that was announced. So I didn't really put it in here, but do you have anything? So Persona 5 uh, S, which we all thought was going to be Switch, turned out to be Persona 5, uh, uh, what the fuck is it called? Uh, S- Scramble. S- Scramble, thank you. Uh, it's a Mizu game or whatever they call them. Yeah. Which is uh, hack and slash Dicey Warriors shit. Is that the best way to describe it? I guess. I guess so, Maybe. yeah. I, I, I don't really play them. I don't really know much about them. They don't no. really interest me. I just think of them as Dynasty Warriors type games. Uh, that's what the Persona 5 thing is. Uh, you got any interest? I mean, it could be interesting slashing things up with that awesome soundtrack playing. I mean, it makes yeah, sense. That's, good. that's a good point. They've all got this. like, all the characters have like guns and swords and stuff. So it sort of yeah. fits. Obviously, uh, there's been a heap of mainstream big games that have gone, been uh, adapted to that format the last few years. Even Zelda. The rule in the Fire yeah. Emblem. So it just speaks so highly for Persona 5 being one of those. Yeah. I mean, they cut the trailer together cool, so it looked cool when they first showed it, and then when you realise what it actually was, obviously. Yeah, we si- Joker's sitting on top of that fucking light pole or whatever. Yeah. You're like, what's happening here? What's going to go down? Are they, they remaking Persona 5 in like a... <laughs> Yeah, what's going on? Is this like Final Fantasy VII style <laughs> remake? <laughs> uh, I thought first. Then like, yes. uh, Scramble, Mizu game. Yeah. And also, it just filled my heart with so much joy. <laughs> I'm sure it did. It, Your evil heart. Uh, with my evil heart, it just, yeah, you know, it was full. I mean, I apologize to Dash as soon as <laughs> the announcement, as soon as it wasn't for Switch. Well, technically, this game is coming to Switch, so... <laughs> you know, you got something. It technically is a Switch game, so the S is correct. It's just not the port that you wanted. Nope. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah I, I don't know if I'd play it. it. It depends. I'd have to see more. I, you, you bring up a good point. Yeah. Like, beautiful looking world, cool soundtrack. Like, if 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 maybe I was to ever try one, it would be listening to that soundtrack, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Like, there's a point. There's a point. But I'm not true interest at this point but i will be waiting i just wanted to put it out there on record because we were are arming and ahhing of course while talking about rumors and I'll, i kept being like i want to play it but i want to play it this year but i'll wait i'll wait i'll wait and i'm definitely going to be waiting until next year until this thing yep, releases well, to play persona because well, if i've waited this long I, I really just don't see any point in you i don't see any point you know why's yep. well wait i might as well wait see no reason check out to. next year when dylan re- royally plays the game <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a podcast that's happening. Yep. Dylan royally plays the game. <laughs> <laughs> For the first dream segment of Platinum Explosion of the year, official dream segment. Uh, in case you missed last week's episode, how this is going to work is each week, me and Ash are going to be taking turns to pick something from dreams, be that a art piece thing or whatever uh, an actual game a tech demo whatever it's dreams we're gonna find something cool in it and we're gonna talk about it and be like here's a cool thing you should go check it out here's why here's the person's name we created it blah 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 because dreams is a thing it's cool and also this is a playstation podcast so <laughs> kind of all makes sense uh so i am pimping today it's a little game called poly- polyarity and it was polarity by 
pl- thank you, sorry, Polarity. And it was made by Slurm McKenzie, which is S L U R M M A C K E N Z I E. Uh, look up even the name or that username and you yeah. will be able to find it. If you look game. up Polarity, you should be able to find it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is, it's not that long, but it's a cool idea and I can definitely see it expanded into more. But what yeah. it is, is you play as a like a little blocky type character, I guess. My first thing was, my first thing starting this thing was, A, I I kind of like the way this character is controlling because they feel weighty, like because they're constantly like yeah. kind of swinging because they're box size and stuff. And I'm like, I kind of like how they like straight away Feeling the controls, it just makes the character feel off balance. Uh, it has a cool soundtrack that's playing in the background. I think it might just be from the the straight up dreams music. I'm not 100 percent sure like how much was reworked on it. Either way, the soundtrack's working quite well for the given like the context of the world drink because it's a very yeah. much like techno. I don't know, whatever. It's like a that t- type of looking world. So it sounds cool. Whatever's going on. Um, the mechanics are this. You walk on top of a blue pad. You can press uh, R2 or L2. I don't remember which no, one. No, it was X. Now. X and then yeah. circle? It, Something? The blue remember. button on the thing. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that would make sense, I guess. Uh, so you, you walk onto the blue ones. You press X and that will uh, shoot you off them. You and then when you jump. Talk, like. Jump, yeah. Uh, when you sh- And then when you walk on the red ones, you press square circle. and that will make you circle and that will make you go off them so at yeah. first it seems rather simple um uh, and then it, that's what i'm saying it's more of like a tech demo thing it could definitely be expanded on into a lot harder levels i could see it yeah. because it like kind of sets up you, you go along the first few jumps you're collecting orbs and secrets and and what have you uh i died a few times i gotta be honest because i i think this is the thing where it's like for pl- platformers like this and the, the thing you don't notice until you play one that's not co- tuned like the ones you're used to playing uh yeah. is it is re- it's very important to add that element to make it easy to see where I'm going to land, like when I'm floating through there. Be that the shadow of my feet, like floating along, so I can tell where I want to. You know what I mean? Like something like that. So it yep. makes it easier to to see where I'm going. But nonetheless, uh, but you get to one of the last sections in the level, um, and there's like this uh, laser beam moving backwards off like two laser beams, so moving backwards and forwards across this section. And there's a whole heap of uh, blue and red squares and you kind of have to make your way across by remembering to press the right, uh, either circle or square, the, the right block you're landing on to, to jump across it. And I think that was like the most evident of like, you could definitely see that mix of that gameplay design being mixed into making a lot uh, a hard but fun uh, platformer design based on... Yeah having to make it across jumps, but then having the right muscle memory and reaction time to like press square or whichever circle, one you're actually standing depending on, depending on yeah. which platform you're actually landing on. And I, I could see that being a, um, a cool concept I felt. So yeah, yeah, it's got the basic premise. Like obviously the, it's like a magnet sort of thing where you get pushed by whatever. Yeah. Thing is like polarity. Yeah. <laughs> polarity makes sense. Uh, yeah. I, I thought it was fun. It's good concepts obviously it'd be cool more levels would be great and just to see what you could do with it mm-hmm. like is uh, above you and that sort of thing i thought it also helped that obviously the camera you full full 360 you can move yep, it yep. wherever you want which helped yep, yep. Uh, yeah some of the platforms were like at an angle so you could sort of jump forward and one of them was sort of hidden behind the ledge so yes yes <laughs> There's secrets as well. Also, I smashed you on the time trial of this, so just so you know. Oh, I died a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I died a lot. It was lot. like a good minute difference. Yeah. <laughs> <So it's laughs> Although you did uh, get more points than me, which I don't understand, but. I kept going for all the secrets and stuff, and that's well, how that, I kept dying. That would be it, probably. <laughs> several times. Um, but yeah, uh, polarity. I will also, I'm, I, I've added this to like a uh, collection thing that I've called Platinum Explosion, right? I'm trying, I'll try and figure out if I can like, add you as someone who could also add to that i don't know if that's possible but we'll find out if yeah. not i guess tell i'll add your levels to that as well yeah because then we can keep track of uh everything of everything one, uh yeah we can keep track of everything in this one co- sort of uh collection thing and then i think people will be able to search for that too just by searching for like platinum explosion and then I, they can just follow platinum explosion the collection yes, and that's where you'll, you'll be able to find all the levels, and then it also means that it like 
three, six month, whatever t- from now, we could go back and be like, let's recheck out Polarity and see if that guy's or girls or whatever yeah. gone back and ch- made more to their game and blah, 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 blah. That's so, an episode when we're... D- <laughs> We, we, there's no news we happening. We need to bank one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good point. Uh, that's it. That's that's this week's streams level. Check it out, everyone. Slur McKenzie. Play. Great name. Yeah, it's, an, it's a name. Yes, VR for the players. I got two VR uh, news stories briefly this week. The first one is just more of a fun piece, uh, which is that Brie, uh, Brie Larson played Beat Saber on Jimmy Fallon. It wasn't with PSVR, but I still thought it was relevant for uh, the VR world because, of course, it is a mainstream, really popular uh, Tonight show that was having Brie Larson, big actress, of course, Avengers, Captain Marvel, all these sort of things, playing Beat Saber, which is an indie game and also a, a VR game. And even though it wasn't on PSVR, I think this is obviously good, uh, good press, press and momentum for VR because I saw a lot of people being like tweeting it around, of course, and whatever else and sharing it. And a lot of people that, uh, not for the VR aspect, but more of like, here, look at Brie Larson doing this, blah, blah, blah. blah. So I think that was really great for Beat Saber of course, but also just for VR and for, for people who maybe don't even know what VR is and don't know like how it works or like what games you play or and all these sorts of things. So yeah, I think it's a fun little uh, clip. Brie Larson play, playing Beat Saber on Jimmy Jimmy Fallon. There's not much to it, but yeah, it's, it's fun. Do you yeah, have any, yeah uh, watch it. I mean, there's not, yeah, not much to it. She smashed him. Um, I'm pretty sure he didn't even finish the level. Uh, yeah. It's cool. I, I like that. That vibe setup is cool. I've seen it at like Nazi does it on Twitch and that sort of thing. But yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, it is. But still, we hate yeah. it. Yeah, but it should be on PSVR. <laughs> it should be only place PSVR. to play it. That's cool. Uh, the big VR story I thought of the week is that Upload VR is hosting uh, a E3 VR showcase this this year. So Upload VR is a uh, VR focused centric. Uh, website and much like the kind of PC showcase uh, thing which is kind of put together by a, another outlet to kind of show some or even the kind of funny showcase I guess which is a yeah. like a place putting together stuff they are putting together a showcase of ER uh, at E3 of VR, VR stuff so um, they put together a tra- trailer video it doesn't really say much it just has the uh, J- Jamie Feltman who is the senior editor there come out uh, and he says E3 uh, when talking about it said E3 is one of the most exciting times of years for gamers, but we don't feel VR has gotten its due at past shows. The E3 showcase is a much needed chance to show everyone the amazing work VR developers carrying out across the globe and give those studios some vital exposure. So something to look forward to. I feel I I definitely feel like it's like if Sony's going to show any big things that's coming from them, obviously not there. Uh, Certain of companies, if they're going to show big things, probably won't be there, but I could see some smaller indie stuff. Yeah. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it could be really good. Falcon and Falcon age was shown in the KF kind of funny, kind of funny showcase. So that sort of levels sort of stuff, which is the bulk of stuff that's currently on PSV. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I feel like it could be uh, good. Uh, we don't know for sure if any anything will be shown will be PSVR compatible or if it'll be compatible down the line. Or uh, I'm sure and I'm hoping it'll be a mixed bag. Uh, the site upload uh, VR covers everything, you know, from Oculus, PSVR to most recently they've been putting up stuff about, of course, the Nintendo Switch VR stuff. So I don't feel like they... Um, they're focused on one particular thing. They're just definitely about just VR in general, not just the one particular Oculus rig or something like that. So hopefully we can get some cool announcements out of it that might not have got the uh, press otherwise, especially at E3, uh, at E3 when it's mostly about these big AAA uh, typical, uh, you know, controller in hand type games. That's really what we mostly get seen showing off at E3. Yeah. And um we all know that VR games are hard to demo and show off and these sorts of things, but hopefully a show just focused on E3, uh, sorry, a show focused solely on VR where people who care about VR will be able to tune in and get excited about stuff will be good because I can, uh, people can come back to their shows, their websites or whatever, you know, people go back to their blogs, 
uh we can come back to our podcast talk about what we've seen these sorts of things it'll be good to like cover it because like even if they don't officially announce anything for psvr on there we can still be like well that game's cool and we can start talking about it and then hopefully you know if enough people talk about cool games even if they not aren't initially announced for psvr the show of interest could get people to bring it over to psvr quicker so um hopefully we get some cool cool things shown there For your ETA this week, I have three trophy lists that have popped. The first one is a Plague Tale Innocences trophy list, which is mostly made up of chapter-specific completion and collectible trophies, though there are a couple trophies that might be missable. Uh, a chapter select feature will make them easy to go back and wrap up, presumably, along with any missed collectibles. Overall, it seems like an easy list with a guide to help you out with those collectibles and potentially chapter specific missable trophies we have no idea how long the game is going to be also so it's worth keeping your eye out to see how long it's going to be from the trophy list it is at least 13 chapters at the moment though ugly dolls is a movie that's coming out based on the toys and it looks like we have a movie tying game to follow along with that something we don't get a lot of these days the list seems easy though as long as there are no missable collectibles and or a chapter select feature i'd probably wait to see if this is on sale obviously and to see how long the estimated time to platinum this is going to be but hopefully maybe possibly an easy kids game platinum ahead of you the third game is jupiter and mars the dolphin game that you may have seen trailers before uh, that is out this week and the trophy list is mostly concerned about collectibles and saving animals it seems the developers have said that the game will be about six hours long so hopefully as long as you can replay sections of the game uh, to go back for your collectibles and saving animals this would probably put it around an estimated 10 hour platinum with a guide probably cutting down the amount of time necessary so keep an eye on this one as well i'd like to give you my two cents on the days gone trophies but i really haven't played enough from what i've gathered though it seems like it's a long 80 plus or 60 plus hour platinum depending on the guides and what difficulty you're playing on but overall from what i can tell it's an easy just long platinum that is it for this week's episode of platinum explosion you can follow me on Twitter at Vivaldil, V-I-V-A-L-A-D-I-L. You can follow Ash on Twitter at Ashley Hobby, A-S-H-L-E-Y, H-O-B-L-E-Y. You can follow this show on Twitter at Platt Podcast. Don't forget to rate the show on Apple Podcasts if you can. And if you can't, a bit of word of mouth or sharing around on your own social media, telling a friend is the way to go about it. You can join our Discord to chat about games, ask for tips on trophies or anything like that. Questions for the show, explosionnetwork.com slash Discord. And this is, of course, a product of the Explosion Network, of which you can find many more shows, articles, news, reviews, and much more at explosionnetwork.com. And you can follow Explosion Network on Twitter at ExplosionPod. Until next week, remember, every trophy counts. Ash. Okay. Get real, get real aggressive at the end of the <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>Catch up on the latest TV, online media and movie news from the biggest comic book films and YouTube crazes to our local cinema scene. And then hear what we've been watching before asking the age-old question, what do you want to watch? Available on all podcast services every second Friday. Just search your podcast app for what do you want to watch and subscribe for free now. And keep watching stuff, I guess. It was like I saw you lazing off when you was, uh, you was doodling on your notepad and you weren't reading your school book and I smacked that fucking desk with my <laughs> <roll>. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs>